Good evening, everyone. This is Ryan Hoyme, a.k.a. Massage Nerd, and this show is brought to you by our friends at Massage Magazine Insurance Plus. Massage Magazine has been exploring touch therapies for over 25 years and has used that industry knowledge to develop the best value liability insurance in the business. Welcome, everyone. This is Ryan Hoyme, a.k.a. Massage Nerd. Tonight we have a special guest, Robert Gardner. Welcome, Gar Robert. Hey. Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's get a little bit of background on you. So how did you get involved in massage then, and when did you start? And... Um, when I was 22 years old, I was a philosophy student at Louisiana State University. Um, I tell people I was thinking deep thoughts about unemployment. <laughs> and uh, Coming home from Jazz Fest late one night, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, um, I was rear-ended by a drunk driver and had a really bad whiplash. So I went from robustly healthy to just sick almost overnight. Um, mainly just a lot of soft tissue damage and probably ligament issues through my cervical spine. I got really sick. I couldn't continue with school. I dropped out and the traditional medical establishment in Louisiana just didn't seem to have any answers for me. I wound up um, working in a health food store, changing my diet, looking more into health. So all of that inquisitiveness I applied to philosophy, I switched into body work, essentially. Um, a young woman I knew who worked at the health food store gave me a massage. Then all bets were off. It was massage school. Uh, the weekend after I finished massage school, I took my first course in cranial sacral therapy. I went back to Louisiana, practiced for a few years. And almost at the same time, I picked up yoga and Thai massage, about a month apart. And I just fell in love with both of them immediately. So they've had a profound influence on my practice on both sides of the spectrum, one active, one passive. Yeah. And, and then um, what is your definition of Thai massage? Oh, it, it's constantly refined. Um, there's a lot of argument um, on the U.S. Thai massage group about Thai massage as it's spreading from Southeast Asia uh, into the United States. It, to me, it reminds me a lot of the discussions that go on about yoga and what's happened to yoga in the past 30 or 40 years as it's come from India to the United States. And it deals with this cultural change where the, the packaging is slightly different. We don't have the same cultural background. When I talk about Thai massage, I typically tell people it's lazy yoga because I'm trying to figure out what people might be familiar with to try to describe it. But it's a lot of uh, passive mobilization, kneading, stretching, and compressions done on a mat. Going to an exact definition is a little bit difficult, and I find some of those discussions to be the most interesting on that U.S. Thai massage group because people are integrating various things. Some people are integrating Ayurveda into Thai massage. Some people are strict traditionalists. Some people are incorporating things like TCM or traditional t Chinese medicine with like five element theory. So saying what Thai massage is is a little complicated. If I get into it, I tell people that Thai massage is the bodywork component of traditional Thai medicine. And traditional Thai medicine is a much broader uh, practice in much the same way that Hatha Yoga is only a sliver of what yoga is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because um, have you, I mean, it seems like when people learn it over in a different country and then come over here, sometimes it gets watered down or changed and stuff like that. Um, have you got body work by uh, many other um, Thai therapists, and are their styles different too? And I haven't had a huge number of therapists trained by different teachers uh, work on me. Um, I'm so isolated in a way here in Austin, Texas, that quite literally, other than the students that I've trained, the first good Thai session I had from someone who was not trained by the teacher I studied with in Louisiana was eight years, and she just moved to town from North Carolina. <laughs> Yeah, because um, have you ever been overseas and stuff? And not, not yet. The okay. plan is to eventually go over, and I've been asking people on the U.S. Thai Massage Group because a lot of them have connections in Thailand. They know teachers, and I'm trying to find out who I could go study with if I go abroad, but I just haven't been able to yet. 
And what I've heard from some people is sometimes it's um, they actually include adjustments and stuff, it seems, in, in, into the treatment. Yeah, I don't know what the legal framework is in Thailand, but I know it, it's almost like the, the Wild West of the East, as yep. far as I can tell. They're, yep. they're, they're mixing and matching things in a way that wouldn't be done in the U.S. Yep. And, and how long have you been teaching it, then? Um, I think I've been teaching now for about three years, and I've been practicing it for ten. Okay. And and is that the main style that you perform and teach them to? And Which is what? The Thai massage? Yeah, primarily. Um, I'll still do some table work. It, it really just depends on the client that I'm working with and their limitations. Occasionally I'll have someone who can't uh, get up and down off the floor to be able to do mat work. So to me it's just having another tool. I'll occasionally do table work, but I really prefer the leverage and body mechanics that comes along with Thai massage and mat work. Yeah, and for myself, I love, I, I think Thai massage is one of my favorite styles just because it seems like more of a workout for myself too. And yeah, I, I've had massage therapists tell me, they say it looks like a lot of work. They'll, they'll see me work on someone and they're like, I, it looks like too much work. But for me, I, I think what it is is I burn more calories because I'm more moving around, I'm more active. But it doesn't feel like I'm using small muscles to work on bigger structures of the client. So if I'm using my knees and body weight, it, it means that I'm, I'm relaxing my own musculature. I'm not overworking my hands. Yeah. And, and for me, being a male massage therapist, too, and stuff, is easier to talk people into Thai massage, too, it seemed. And yeah, it, it's one of the, the greatest things about it. Um, being in a different cultural context in the U.S., uh, we started a, a group here in Austin, the Austin Thai Massage Group, and we get together once a week and give and receive, but the great thing about it is because everybody's clothed, you can do it in a group dynamic in a way that you wouldn't in a, a spa setting. Yep, and it's, it's so much easier, I think, to learn from everybody, too, so you don't have to have curtains and everything else, too. Yes, <laughs> the visual component, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because um, when I taught it, too, to my students, they loved it because when we were teaching it, and even when they were um, working on the public time massage, they loved it because they could actually cheat. They could see what the other students were doing, too, all the time. So. <laughs> yeah, when I, when I perform it at time massage open practice, these events we hold, um, I tell people time massage is great because you can do it at parties. Whenever somebody says, oh, you're a massage therapist, will you work on me? They've never seen anything like it. So if I have them lay on the ground, I can do a little bit, and people are just standing around looking at me like, what in the world is this? <laughs> and people love it. They absolutely love it. Yeah. <laughs> and are you, are you big into the name of the techniques then, too? Or? Um, in time massage, like yeah. specific movements, you mean? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. In Thai, I don't know if specific techniques have a name. Western teachers seem to take techniques and they give it a name based on what, <laughs> like I've seen one, it's called tree hugger, where you, you hug the knee and you got to pull somebody over. It looks kind of like tree pose. There are things like that, but I don't know if most of the positions or whatever they're called, I don't know if they have an actual name in Thai. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I just think that's easier for Americans to learn it, too, and stuff, if they have a name with it and stuff. A name, and, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> and and um, would, would you say it's really different than table massage, then, too, with Thai massage? And... I, I find it a completely different way of interacting with tissue. The fundamental difference that I see is when people want me to use cream and glide, I feel like I can't get the same structural change, especially to posture, that I can from mobilizing and compression. So instead of dancing on someone with cream and glide, I feel like I'm dancing with someone. I'm leading them around trying to open their shoulder blades, open their spine. To me, it feels, it feels different as a practitioner to give the session. Yep. And do you, um, do you recommend any certain time mat at all then? No. Um, what I usually tell students, especially if they're on a low budget, is to try to find an old futon pad. A lot of people will put, give them away almost for free on Craigslist. You can buy mats, but the cheapest that I see are typically around the $200 range. So for some students to take a class and buy a mat is a little, you know, uh, difficult cost-wise. So usually what I have them do is just use an old futon pad if they have it. 
Yeah, and, and for myself, too, I used a futon mattress, but the problem is it was so thick, and it was actually more work, it seemed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so basically, if, if you have a really deep pad, you can use, like, a pillow or something to cushion because it's the gap between the mat and the, the ground. That's what the difference is. It has to be the right thickness, but at the same time, it has to be firm enough so that if somebody's, say, laying on their side, their lower hip isn't grinding into the ground. Yep. It, it felt like a, when I was playing um, softball in the sand kind of thing, too. It seems harder. <laughs> but that only lasted for a few sessions, and then I had to get my own mat after that. So, <laughs> yep. And, and um, do you use um, bolsters and pillows and stuff, too, with your treatments? And I tend to be a little bit of a minimalist. Um, I don't use a huge amount of bolsters and props, sometimes pillows. The one thing I have started to do is my sessions have transitioned in the past few years where I keep pushing the envelope. So I wind up doing things like having a receiver lay on a foam roll to try to allow their shoulder blades to fall back. And then I'll work on, say, pec minor or subclavius to try to open their chest while they're in this passive, relaxed back bend. So in a sense, that's a bolstered you know, position to try to help them open up. The other end of the spectrum is putting um, little foam mats and doing acro yoga and combining that with the Thai massage. So inverting the client on my feet and working with that as well. Yep. And, and um, I, especially in Thailand, I've heard of them giving like two and a half hours, sometimes three hour um, treatments and stuff. I mean, is that common over here then? <coughs> I don't find it to be as common except amongst practitioners who are in private practice. The thing that I did for my private practice was I set a flat fee for a session and I tell people that the average length is two hours. And usually I don't book clients jammed right up next to each other so it gives me space to be able to not only talk with them a little more but educate if they need it, show them some stretches based on what we found during the session. And I find what happens with clients is they really enjoy the session, but there's also a sense of luxury because of the time involved. Once we get past the first hour is when the real relaxation begins and they drop in. Yeah, and especially, I mean, in the beginning, they love to talk to you usually and stuff. And, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, just to get it out and get more comfortable with everything, too, then. And, and, and um... Have you, with, with practitioners and stuff like that, um, to other Thai practitioners, even videos or anything that you've seen and stuff, um, is there any things that they're doing different um, that you've seen and stuff compared to your work? And I think Thai massage is a little bit like dance. There are so many ways to approach a, a movement or a step or a compression that I actually pick up a lot of information from watching YouTube videos and with a keen eye knowing why did they leverage them that way, what were they trying to do to their spine and the rotatores, you know, the paraspinal musculature. You can pick up a lot from watching videos, but I usually tell people to definitely try to find a teacher and study. It's a little bit like trying to learn massage from videos if you've never had practice giving and receiving. Yep. You don't really know how much pressure do you apply. You know, how much of a stretch do you give the client or receiver. Yep. And do you have any videos of your own then? Or? Yeah, on my YouTube channel there are some videos I shot with a $100 flip cam. And then the latest video, video that came out is basically the teaser for my upcoming video series. The, the free time massage workbook can be downloaded by anyone. That sequence that's in the workbook is what the videos are. Page by page, people are going to be able to go through the videos and follow that sequence while I lead a class so that they can go through and try to do that through the videos. Yeah, and, and that's nice because the thing is you're catching all their different learning too and stuff because everybody yeah. learns a little bit different. Yeah, it's a struggle as a teacher to try to meet students where they're at, but you just respond to their questions and try to give them what they say they need. Yep, because for myself too, I first started out with ebooks, and then I realized that not everybody learns good that way, so then I started making videos and stuff, so it's just like, yeah. it's a spiral basically, so. <laughs> yeah. So um, the, the videos, are you going to have those for sale then, or? 
Uh, I believe so. They should be out just before <coughs> Thanksgiving. I'm not sure what I'm going to do to distribute them yet. I'm still trying to figure out. It'll probably start as online distribution, and if there's demand, we may put it in a DVD format for sale as well. Yeah, because, because it seems like everything's going online and stuff, so yeah. it's so much more convenient for people just to download it that way and stuff, and, yeah. and it's a lot cheaper um, for everybody around, too, then, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because for myself, back in the day and stuff, I, I made um, videos, and then I used createspace.com, and then I um, they are, they're actually owned by Amazon, so Amazon did all the, the work for me and stuff, but... Yeah. Of course, you don't make a lot of money off it, but you'd never have to touch them. That's what's nice about it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. The great thing was, like, the workbook was my first real step into some sort of professional product. And in developing the workbook, what I realized was I was spending a huge amount of money on paper and ink to print these workbooks. So after the PDF was developed, I just said, well, just give it away. Just collect an email address. Let anybody, you know, download a copy. And essentially, it prevents piracy because you can just come to me and get it. Yep. <laughs> Why would you pour something you can get for free anyway? But it also yep. acts as advertising. It allows a massage therapist who only has a table practice to look at something new that's presentable, pretty clear and concise, and allows them to try something different. Yep. And um, how, how long are your videos going to be then? Um, I think once they're done and processed, I think it's going to be a little bit over an hour, but I'll have to wait and see once the videos are done processing. The video shoot was just the other day. Okay. Yeah. And you're, you're still talking, so you're not exhausted then? Or... <laughs> no, 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 no. Fortunately, uh, like I said, I was robust and healthy at 22. I've regained most of that. I'm older and got some aches and pains, some more wounds, <laughs> but a regular yoga practice and lots of body work, I I'm, keep a pretty high energy level. Yeah. yeah. And, and do you ever get into um, um, table tie at all then? I do a little bit. Originally I had students who would contact me and they would want a table tie class and I was very resistant because I was trying to move away from table work towards tie which is traditionally done on a mat and I consistently have students asking for it because what happens in my area is there's not enough tie massage in spas, clinics, chiropractic offices to allow my students to pick up the work and go practice there. So in developing table tie and allowing them to do a sequence on the table, it helps me reach out to that market and deal with those students because they need to be able to practice it to be able to give and receive repeatedly to develop any proficiency. I think in basically the beginning of December, I'm going to do another photo shoot where I'm developing an entire table tie sequence and a longer mat sequence as well. So there'll be new workbooks. Yeah, that would be awesome because um, one of um, this therapist that I know, she um, she has electric table and she can't move it out of her room, of course. But um, she loves performing tie, tie massage, so she had to learn table tie in order to keep up with that. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and then um, do you have other videos that you're going to be making in the future? Then you two think. Yeah, um, I shot some additional videos with uh, the higher quality camera and the film crew for YouTube. I'll probably post those sometime in the near future. The, the verdict is, is still out about whether I'm going to buy a higher end video camera and a wireless microphone so that I can go ahead and start producing higher quality videos. The $100 flip cam was uh, amazing. You have no idea. I was very, uh, <laughs> my first video I think on YouTube I talk about technophobia. I had to have conversations with my wife about what Twitter was you know, after I had done yoga to calm down because I didn't understand well, why would anybody do this? This doesn't make any sense. The, the technology curve has been pretty steep for me. Yep. And, and for myself too, I started off on flip cams too. It is yeah. so nice and I'll even, this is, this <laughs> I love it. Yeah, a cafe press. You can actually have uh, logos and stuff imprinted on it. Oh, so. nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the, again, the technology, I mean, it's just gone so fast uh, with everything else, but typically you don't need the biggest and greatest thing um, nowadays. No, no. And, I, I've quickly given up my need for perfection. You know, cause, and I myself too, I mean, we're human, I mean, it makes it real if we screw up every now and then or if it's not yeah. um, cinema quality and stuff, but again, we're not charging a uh, fortune for it either too, yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. 
that's the main thing. But um, I definitely recommend a wireless mic and stuff like that, just because a lot of people save um, audio is actually two thirds of the video. Uh -huh. because, yeah, because so many people are multitasking all the time. At least they're listening to it and stuff. So yeah, yeah. And it took me a while for it to get the right one for that and stuff. But <laughs> yeah, and and um. It, have you an, evolved your style and stuff over the years too and stuff? Um, yeah, I think every every practitioner's style is going to be a, 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 cumu, a let's see a cumulative response to whatever they picked up. In other words, being a Western body worker who was trained in Swedish and deep tissue initially, and then yoga and Thai massage. My yoga practice has infused what I do as a Thai massage practitioner, both in my sense of presence and my sense of touch. So in Thai massage, you're using your knees, your feet, and I have a greater a palpatory sense than most massage therapists who are only used to using their hands. So I can feel with my feet almost similarly to the way I would use my hands. And the only other thing that I've added over the years is like yoga therapy, some macro yoga, and trigger points. Um, I find trigger point therapy in particular blends really well with Thai massage. Yep. And do you get into the sen lines much then? Yeah, the sen lines are just the energy lines in Thai massage. It's the one thing that I think really separates it from Ayurveda and also from traditional Chinese medicine. They're totally different than meridians. But it was part of my original training. They call them the Sip Sin, the ten main lines, and I teach them in my uh, classes as sort of a framework of understanding of what we're doing. Uh, if people have any issues with the energetics of it all, I did. Um, I had a wonderful time massage the first session I ever had, and the first day I went in for class to learn it, and they said energy line. I was just like, ah, I don't have time for this. I want muscles, and I want anatomy, and I want origin and insertion. And someone came along, and they stimulated the, the line on the inside of my legs, on the inside of the thigh. And I, I had no anatomical correlation for why it was so tender. So I have just used them and made sense of kind of driving that road again and again to understand what effect it has on a client. And wasn't there originally, I think, like 72,000 send lines or something like that? And yeah, people, people make comparisons to things like nadis and yoga where they, they run through the body. But in the end, I tend to make my teaching style very simple and very approachable. I teach the sip send because in my experience it does work, but I don't overly complicate it. And in addition, I include the Western anatomy when it's applicable and important. Yeah, because uh, and, and a lot of times people sometimes just forget um, about the send lines and they just kind of get in the routine. And then, I mean, if you want to kind of look at it, um, shiatsu um, and Thai massage are kind of similar in um, yes. technique base. And then acupressure and um, are it's got kind of different kind of thing. But you're just more isolated treatment kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. The, the main thing about the send lines is that in a given session. Meridian theory and working meridians, like according to Chinese medicine or shiatsu, it seems to be a little more complex. I, I tell people that traditional Chinese medicine and shiatsu seems like a symphony. What I do is teach 10 sen lines, and basically what this is to an, an experienced massage therapist is I teach you three chords on a guitar and I tell you to go rock out. It's punk. <laughs> It's like it's a much more simple theory, but I still find the body work to be extremely effective. Yeah, and you got to be a lot of fun in class too. It seems. Yeah. I, did you get into this business to be uptight? <laughs> no. no, I've got to relax. Yeah. <laughs> and what what kind of typical music do you use then? Oh, with Thai massage, I can get away with a lot more in my private practice. Um, it's not uncommon for me to get away with Alice in Chains, Jar of Flies, uh, Billy Breathes by Fish or Band of Gypsies uh, by Jimmy, you know, Jimi Hendrix and the Band of Gypsies. Um, a lot of times there's Krishna Das. Um, uh, a lot of different Krishna Das albums, sort of Kirtan chant seem to go well in addition. 
Um, I can get away with music that's a little more upbeat, I find. Time massage tends to invigorate a little bit more than Swedish and deep tissue, and clients don't seem to mind in a longer session sort of music changes. Yep. Do you, you find yourself going with the beat of the music sometimes too? or A little bit, a little bit. There's always the focus on the client and then breathing. That, that comes about again and again, but I think also because of my yoga practice, my brother listens to black metal, and years ago when I lived with him, I would do yoga in our living room on this uh, Winnie the Pooh rug, and while I'm standing there, you know, <laughs> Warrior Three, uh, my brother is listening to, you know, whatever Norwegian death metal, so there's this <laughs> in the background, but you learn how to keep your center. The, the time massage is a little bit like that as well. I try not to use music that would be unsettling to the client, but I can still get away with a wider range. You know, and, and when I have my practice too, I, um, my full-time practice, I let them bring in whatever music you want. And one time, um, somebody brought in Marilyn Manson. But the thing is, <laughs> <laughs> I was going too much with the beat of the music and stuff. What, so. what, yeah, yeah, just whatever, whatever works. I'm, I'm pretty broad. I have a pretty diverse musical background, so. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, can you tell a little bit more about the Facebook group of the Thai? So, uh, currently there is an Austin Thai massage group, which um, we basically put out information about Thai massage open practice, the free event that we do at Blue Honey Yoga once a week on Thursdays. The other group is the U.S. Thai massage group on Facebook. I started it because I wanted more information about what was going on in the United States what schools exist for Thai massage, and to try to give students a resource so that they could find a massage teacher for Thai massage in their area. So if someone from New York said, I want to study Thai massage, I don't have money to go to Thailand, where do I study? I'm trying to pull that information together and also provide a platform for Westerners to find out information about what's going on in Thailand should they want to go study there. And do Thai massage therapists, um, do they get into heated arguments like a lot of Oh, massage? yes. <laughs> the, the, the absolute most hysterical thing about the Facebook groups, your group, I, don't, I haven't seen that many heated arguments, but some of the other ones I've had where people get really angry. And I think as a former philosophy student, I'm very good at debate, and I'm very good at not engaging in an ad hominem argument. If, if you have an opinion that differs from mine, I'm not going to attack you personally, but I will defend my position and attack your argument. I, I actively tell people on the U.S. Time Massage group because we, we get into it constantly about every little minutia about time massage, and it's not a personal vendetta. It's just trying to, to get clarity about what is traditional time massage, and then how are people mixing and matching other disciplines with Thai massage? Yeah, because in, in my group, too, every now and then there's a heated, uh, I mean, really heated and stuff like that, but then I have to step in just to uh, calm it down a little bit. And <laughs> what kind of cream do you use? It's like yeah. I go to war. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I use oil. <laughs> yeah. So funny, so funny. You're in the minority then. No. <laughs> But I, I myself, I use oil all the time too, just because that's what I grew up on. So, <laughs> and and do you use any kind of lubrication in it um, with with your tie or? Uh, usually no, but it depends on what's going on. What I've noticed from working with people over the past twelve years is that Swedish and deep tissue and its effects on the client and on their tissues is good for a smaller sliver of their physical benefit. So in other words, what I feel like is people go to massage school, they start practicing, they know Swedish and deep tissue, and if the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. But when you develop a much broader spectrum of tools, you have all these options. So I'll still use cream and glide if it's necessary, especially if I need to do a deep vascular flush and try to force some blood flow through. But otherwise, I typically can get away with compression, kneading, and stretching in the time massage session to get the effects I'd like. 
Yeah, I've heard some people even use like baby powder or cornstarch and stuff for like the feet and the abdominal. Yeah, I, I never have. I've yeah. never dealt with powder. But one of the things is because Thai massage can be done clothed and then also done without any sort of lubricants. If I have someone who say comes in for a business meeting, like afterwards, and they don't want me, you know, putting anything on their skin, I've just gotten used to doing table sessions if I have to, of table tie with no cream or lotion at all. Yeah. And I think um, Thai massage is starting to catch on, but do you see it really catching on in the near future then? Or? I can make predictions, but I really don't know exactly how fast it's going to grow. I think that it's too good not to grow. Um, I, I've jokingly told people that I think within 20 to 30 years, that it may possibly be part of core curriculum at massage schools. I think that it's extremely effective and one of the other things that it has going for it is it really allows a therapist to save their hands. You have a much broader range of tools to be able to uh, work on clients. So I'm about 190 pounds. If I work on somebody who's 300, I can still use enough leverage and pressure with Thai massage where I find it more difficult to do that in a table session. Yeah, I definitely notice that too and stuff. I mean, even when I was 50 pounds heavier, it was easy to get um, deep pressure on people and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, just that leverage is just awesome. Yeah. Especially if somebody wants deeper work too. And Do you seem to work more on like athletes too or just the average public or... Primarily, what I think has happened is people who are in chronic pain tends to gravitate towards me, and I think that's because of the effectiveness of the body work, but also because of my emotional and psychological set in having dealt with chronic pain myself. When people tell me they hurt, I can listen. And even if it's not an issue that I've had personally, I know what it's like to be sick, so those people tend to gravitate towards my work. I do get a lot of computer junkies, um, people in the tech industry in Austin who sit at a computer all day as well, who just need some movement and relaxation. There's a handful of athletes, but mainly for me that's been yoga instructors. Okay, so um, typically do yoga instructors or people that perform yoga a lot, do they typically like to get into a receiving time massage then, would you say? Or? I almost always find that they enjoy receiving it. it. It's too similar to yoga because Thai massage to me often reminds me, like I said, of lazy yoga. There are also uh, yoga teachers who wind up taking my classes because they want to add small assists or stretches that are passive into their yoga classes. Say when they're doing something sideline like a twist and they help the student into position and sort of infuse their yoga teaching with some of it. So you teach yoga too, then, right? Yes. Yes. And yeah. and um, do you what what type of yoga do you teach then? And uh, primarily, I just say it's hatha, but I'm very influenced by Iyengar, and then in addition, Bikram yoga in particular. Um, I don't tend to do a lot of um, like Ashtanga. It's not a very fast flowing sequence, but usually the foundation is sun salutations with some additional poses thrown in. Yep, and the, and the thing is, um, for yourself too. I mean, it, did you get into what did you say, yoga first or Thai first, or? I, I discovered yoga literally about a month before I had my first Thai massage, and it was after the third yoga class I took that I literally was floored. In the same way, when I had my first massage, I just knew immediately after that third class that I wanted to teach this. Whatever I had just done to my body. It cleansed me to a point where I felt clear, I felt taller, sort of energized, sparkly. So the yoga practice and the Thai massage for me just collided at the same time. They just met and it's almost impossible for me to separate them because it's just been a part of my experience. Yep. And um, can you see you teaching this for years to come then too? And I wonder sometimes what would make me stop because I, I literally think if I was in an accident and somebody cut off my arms, I think I would just massage people with my feet. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, yeah for, for years to come, I, I have no intentions of slowing down or stopping. Yep, and, and the nice thing is, too, I mean, I've been to the Philippines a couple of times, and most of their massage therapists over there are actually blind. 
Ah. Yeah. There's there's a little bit of that in the Thai tradition as well, and some of the temples, I think, some some uh, Thai practitioners who are blind. Yeah. And do you know the average price for a Thai massage over there then, or? You heard? Not overseas. Overseas is really variable. I, I think I've heard something around ten or fifteen dollars if you're in Thailand, m maybe for an hour and a half, two hour session. Um, but I assume it also depends. Are you in an urban center in the rural countryside? Uh, in the United States, it seems to be about the going rate per hour, but the sessions tend to be a little bit longer, so there's a price adjustment there. Yeah, and that's what I noticed in the Philippines too. It's usually like five to ten dollars an hour. Mm. In the more rural settings and stuff like that, but it's yeah. usually like twenty to thirty dollars and more of the higher end. And, yeah, yeah. yeah cause, you know, when I'm when I'm over in the Philippines too, I take advantage of that all the time, as many massages as possible. So <laughs> I hear I hear Thai practitioners talk about going there, and it's like they get a massage in the morning, go have lunch, go get a massage in the afternoon, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get a couple a day. <laughs> and, and have you ever given Thai massage on the sand at all? No, no, I haven't. Yeah, because I received a massage on the sand with a beach towel underneath me, but halfway through it felt like I was getting exfoliated because I got sand on <laughs> me. <laughs> oh, see, I thought maybe you had like a, a towel down or some sort of mat or something, but no, yeah, if you're yeah. on the sand, I can't imagine just every little nook and cranny. <laughs> <laughs> And and what do um what do you typically wear and stuff when you perform Thai massage and what I've transitioned to what I find comfortable is almost always now I wear um, a white T-shirt like this and Thai fisherman pants. They're typically made of cotton. They breathe very well, and I find they're cool in summer and fairly warm in winter. And once I started purchasing them, I, I find it hard to wear much of anything else. Austin is a fairly relaxed city, and when I walk around, even just wearing tie pants, some people will ask me if I teach martial arts or something. So it's almost like advertising. It's very subtle. People would have to pay attention, but a tie fisherman pants almost always very com comfortable to use. And what do client? What do you recommend for clients to use you? What wear them or? Uh, typically clients will come in wearing yoga attire. If I'm ever concerned about what somebody may have come in wearing, jeans typically, they're not very flexible. So I'll usually keep pairs of Thai fisherman pants and oversized t-shirts so that I can have clients change into those. Yep. And, and um, what kind of feedback do you usually get from your students? Um, do they usually stick with um, Thai massage then or do they... I get a wide variety. I, I think it's a little more difficult in my area specifically because there's so little Thai massage presence. There aren't any spas who are allowing therapists to throw down a mat because the spas don't know how to deal with the marketing. So what I find happens is they'll take a class. They're sort of interested. Some of the students will wind up coming to Thai massage open practice once a week. They'll practice and learn more for free, and then slowly they wind up infusing it into their table sessions. So I, again, I started teaching table tie classes just to help them transition the work and build up their practice enough. Because for me, the table tie is how you draw the client to the mat. Uh, you work on somebody on the table and they go, this is, this is great, what is this? And then you explain it to them and say, next time you come in, you know, wear some clothes you'd wear to a yoga class and we'll work on a mat. Yeah, and I've even heard of um, Ashitai. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, even yeah, lots of hybrids. Ashiatsu is the one thing that I think is in the in the fiercest competition, in a sense, for the hearts and minds of Western therapists. They're both extremely effective. Uh, Jenny Spring in San Antonio is a friend colleague, and we've had lots of conversations. She'll sometimes uh, add her class information on the U.S. Thai Massage Group. And the ashi tai is performing a version of table tie with the legs in combination with the bars. Yeah, yeah, because it's pretty pretty amazing how they can actually do some stretching with people. I mean, with their own legs to stretch yeah. their legs and stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of never ending. I mean, there's it just keeps evolving and stuff. So more more tools. That's what I keep telling students. Yeah. I, I'm very much an iconoclast, and I keep telling them to ask me difficult questions I can't answer. 
Yep. As a philosophy student, you know, Socratic ignorance took hold. I learn a lot when people ask me questions I can't answer, or I have clients with problems I can't quite figure out. I use that pattern recognition over time to try to help people. Yep. And, and people that meditate a lot or um, do yoga a lot, do they typically get into actually practicing Thai massage, would you say more? Or? I do find some do. It's a natural progression. The, the best story about Thai massage to me, the myth that goes along with Thai massage is that the Buddhist doctor Jivaka um, created Thai massage and as Buddhism spread out of India, out of northern India, in the Thailand, it was preserved in monasteries. The monks would work on each other to facilitate their meditation practice. They would stretch, open up their hips so they could sit and meditate with less physical issues. Then people from the village would come in and receive sessions of, as a part of their sort of indigenous health care. And I notice a lot of people, they go one way or the other. They come from a massage background and do Thai massage and slowly get into yoga and meditation. Or they're dealing with something like yoga and meditation and go the opposite direction. Yeah. And then you mentioned earlier about um, open practice. I mean, is that kind of like a meetup group too then? That any yeah, so it started as a Facebook group, and the, the meetup group mirrors all of the same information, but it just allows people to come in and sample some of it for free. Some of my students, in addition to people involved in the Austin Acro community, come out. We sometimes get 30 or so people in a night, and it is massage anarchy in all its glory. <laughs> there is... Somebody doing acro yoga over here, and there's somebody doing a press to handstand over here, and somebody's working on a mount, somebody's rotator cuff, and I get a chance to kind of mingle, see what people are doing, make sure everybody's safe, and in addition, people just ask me questions. I help them with whatever physical issues they're having, if they're having pain somewhere, and just try to give back to the community in the same way that the monks did from the monasteries. That is so awesome because um, here in Rochester, Minnesota, a while ago we tried to start up a meetup group and stuff like that, but that miserably failed really quick and stuff. Oh, and, ooh. Yeah. Was it just for massage? Yeah, just for massage, yeah. yeah. yeah but um, it, it seems like um, so many massage therapists are kind of protective of their techniques sometimes and stuff, but I might, my bit. belief is just give everything away with that. And then the thing is, yeah. that a lot of times clients go to your personality too. That's yeah. Like, for you and I, I would suspect, I've seen a pretty drastic change between an older business style of protecting everything and the internet age, where a little bit where we are, where it's like make YouTube videos, give it away for free, uh, give people information, and you draw a lot of clients that way. People find me from a video they find on you know, trigger points, and then they wind up contacting me wanting a session. Yep. Yeah, because I mean, it just makes everybody so much close, closer too. It seems like that. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and especially when I go to conferences, there are so many people know me now just because of the videos and everything else. So that's you're you're a celebrity. What? <laughs> <laughs> you're a celebrity in the massage world. No. Yeah. I'm surprised when massage therapists don't know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> and it's mostly people that are older or that really aren't online much and stuff like that. It seems that's yeah. what I found out and. Because my core audience is mostly massage students. That's my main core and stuff. So, oh, okay. Yep. And, and with time massage, too, does, do you ever get aches and pains, or is it hard on your knees and stuff? Or? From giving the work? Yeah. Yeah, I had someone recently, I, I would post something on Facebook and say, uh, save your hands, you know, promote a longer career, and it would be a link to my workbook. And I had someone reply, uh, save your hands, destroy your knees. Oh. You know, do Thai massage. And I was like, what? And I went on the U.S. Thai massage group and I asked people, I said, listen, we all practice mat work. There's lots of kneeling and like knee movements, leg stuff. Does, does anybody have knee problems or do people develop knee problems? Because the ideal was completely beyond me. I actually had a small knee injury from sitting in Lotus in yoga where I think I tore maybe a little bit of cartilage and I never stopped working because the compression and stretching around the quadriceps and the musculature around my knee actually gets flushed more frequently because of the way I'm using my body. So the, what I've found is actually that it's better for my knees. It's very difficult for an older practitioner to limber up, but it's part of the reason I encourage my students to take yoga classes and slowly incrementally allow their hips and, and pelvis to open. 
to allow more movement around their knees as well. And do Thai therapists typically have to be really flexible then too? Or? No, I don't find so at all. There's usually 12 different ways to do something. And when I'm in a class and a student is telling me they're uncomfortable in this position, I say change it. And I just give them some more options so that they understand there's more than, I hate this phrase, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I think it's the worst phrase ever, but it always applies. So if somebody can't do something because of their knees, there's table tie. And in addition, they can usually usually use bolsters and props with themselves and the client to make things more comfortable. Yep. And is there any major contraindications and stuff with Thai massage? Or? The, the primary one I tell people about is osteoporosis. Um, you're not going to do any huge, uh, like, deep compressions on someone who has osteoporosis. The other are spinal twists. Anything that twists the spine, like there, in my workbook, you lift someone in this sort of swing. You don't want to do that to somebody who's had, like, lumbar surgery or had a lumbar disc that's been herniated. Yeah. Yep. And, and what are the, um, some of the major things that you've helped in the years and stuff for clients for injuries? And <sighs> Some of the most common complaints that I see, especially with new students, uh, low back pain. I've had low back pain people get a 30-minute table tie session and go from, if 10's going to the hospital and zero's no pain, I've had someone go from like a 7 to a 1 in 30 minutes and then refer all their friends to me. The main conditions that I've seen are just generally back pain. There's been a whole lot of issues with carpal tunnel and sciatica that I've been able to help people with as well. They have pain running down their legs or pain down their arms, and very consistently I've been able to give them relief. It's important to have reasonable goals, but what I tell clients is that I feel comfortable if I can get them to reduce by two points on a pain scale. And if we can do that repeatedly, I typically bring in the big guns with yoga therapy to help show them how to do it to themselves once we've figured out what sort of physical restrictions they're having. Yeah, but in, any other things that you've seen that really help? Um, that... I mean, it's so diverse. I had someone recently who came in. I, I made an arrangement for her to come in for a series of four sessions. She had migraines. And I haven't had a huge history of being able to help migraines, but there was something about this particular client that told me she was having problems with her scalenes. And sure enough, her anterior scalene was so uh, pulling her neck forward that as soon as I press on the upper half of the anterior scalene, she says, oh, I can feel that in the top of my head. So she's not, in my opinion, she's not really having migraines. She's having trigger point problems in her scalenes that are causing that. So there's this blend of body work in my sessions. <laughs> and do all um, liability insurances cover Thai massage, have you heard? Or? You know, it's a good question. As far as I know, they do. If they cover massage, I've never had it come up, but sometimes my insurance issues become complicated because I'm a yoga teacher. I'm sometimes engaging in yoga therapy, and then in addition, acro yoga. So as my practice expands, it becomes more complicated to try to talk to the insurance company to make sure I'm covered. But as far as Thai massage is concerned, my understanding is that most major massage insurance covers that. Yeah, it seems a little bit safer in a way, too, and stuff, so that's yeah. nice about it. Yeah. And, um, I mean, for the thickness of the mat and stuff like that, too, have you ever had, run into um, problems that are too thin and your just knees get beat up? Or? When, the, when the mat is too thin, I usually find it's more uncomfortable for the therapist. And I, if you work four or six hours a day, you don't want to be uncomfortable that long. Um, clients, if the mat is too thin, like their hip or their back feels uncomfortable, there's this sweet spot of the thickness of the mat and how much it sinks. I've been on a really thick mat that then when you sat in the middle of it just sank down to this. <laughs> and it's, it's too squishy. It doesn't, it doesn't provide the support that you need. Yeah, they, they need to make a Craftmatic adjustable mat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure. There might be like a massage table company that could come out with a hybrid that was like a tie mat that was on top of a stand or a platform. I could see somebody hybridizing that somehow to make it work for the West. 
Yeah, because yeah. the only thing I've really seen is a table, but it's more for breast support and stuff, so you can actually pump up that area or lower and stuff. So I, I have a massage table, and typically for about two months it collects dust until that one person comes in, and then I take it out again. So. Deal. <laughs> And and um for for the tie book too and stuff did do you get really detailed into it then and um I go into detail and I go into enough not to obfuscate or make it more complicated than it need be if someone picks up the free workbook they download it off my website it's robertgardnerwellness.com it's free all I do is collect an email for it. I, what I did is I set the workbook up to be able to introduce a therapist to send lines, to introduce them to the mobilizations and compressions, but I include the anatomy so they have more of an anatomical understanding of what's going on in addition to this Eastern energetic model. Yeah, and, and is it um, confusing for somebody that's, let's say, really knows um, traditional Chinese medicine and stuff and then they get into Thai massage or... I don't find it's difficult. What I find is they bring all their baggage with them. So in the same way that when I learned Swedish and deep tissue, I sort of brought that way of thinking into my Thai massage. If somebody's had Shiatsu or TCM training, they tend to bring that into their Thai massage sessions, which I, honestly I encourage. I'm a little bit of an iconoclast. I'm not a traditionalist. I'm definitely a syncretist. Um, a lot of people have issues with the way I feel about acro yoga and its therapeutic potential. But in the end, I encourage my students to have more tools. That's what I'm really in the business of giving them. It's not just traditional Thai. It's a Westerner making sense of traditional Thai, taking what they need to be able to help clients, and then mixing and matching whatever therapies worked for the client outcomes. Yeah. And in your videos too, um, do you actually go through a whole routine or you just kind of break it up in little techniques? Or So far what I've done is a very short routines for a few things, but typically I kept the YouTube video short. A lot of people don't want to watch really long YouTube videos. No. <laughs> the workbook is about 54 pages and the series of videos for a fee that are coming out, I think it's going to be a little over an hour, but that'll be an entire sequence and a flow. Uh, through the pages of the workbook, through that sequence that's prone and supine. But typically the YouTube videos I've just kept short. Yeah, because I, what I noticed too is people's attention spans are just getting worse and worse online, so that's why I've been making a lot of my videos shorter. And <laughs> uh, philosophy student, I could sit down and listen to a lecture for an hour and write an essay like it was nothing. And then I got into yoga and meditation. My, my attention span is actually fairly strong, so I find myself confused. Like I said, Twitter how many characters? <laughs> I can't say anything. <laughs> yeah, and even I've heard some English majors actually hate Twitter because it's kind of insulting. You can only do 140 characters or less and yeah. stuff. So. <laughs> Just changing times. The, the technology has an effect. Overall, I think the overall, I think it's positive. It's positive for our industry and it's positive for most other industries as well. Yep. And um, what, what kind of things that you think um, Thai massage therapists could improve on? Thai massage therapists, in my opinion, are often like me in that Thai massage is so effective at delivering pressure, I sometimes lose my subtlety if I'm not careful. I tend to be a little bit heavy-handed, and I think as a massage therapist, um, Thai massage therapists in addition, we have to receive work as often as we give it, hopefully. So there has to be that balance between giving and receiving. I, I find I get sort of, I don't know, I, I get tight after a while working on people. You don't want to, but it just seems to come from the work and dealing with people's stuff. So typically what I'm doing to encourage students is I tell them to have an active yoga practice in addition to receiving body work regularly. That's the first thing I think they can work on. The other to me is asking difficult questions. They have to ask questions of the medical community. They have to dig deeper into the science of what actually goes on in body work. And I feel like when I deal with Facebook groups, I see it with massage therapists constantly. Lots of arguments about the scientific validity of trigger points. What are the actual mechanisms that are involved in neuromuscular therapy and these other things? Yeah, it's a, just never ending. It's like 
it's, it's complex. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, so your goal is to eventually go over in Thailand too and stuff? And I think what may happen is if I have the funds and the time, I may wind up uh, video blogging my way through Thailand and doing interviews with different therapists that work that I work with. I'd really like to try to document my experience because I feel like I'm that first generation of Western practitioners who didn't go to Thailand, I learned from a Westerner, and then it's going back to the motherland. It's going back to where the work started to try to go full circle. Yep. Yeah, because, uh, I, I mean, I, I've heard some people have positive experiences learning it over there and other ones negative, too. So it's, it's... I, I think you have to do your research. My, my sense from talking to people in the U.S. Thai Massage Group is that because Thailand has a large tourism uh, trade, there are a lot of people who come in from out of the country to study, so more schools have popped up to try to fill that demand. Yeah. And do you think it's gotten more commercialized over there? I, I assume it has, based on what people have told me, but I think you just have to dig. It's kind of like being in your area and finding a really good massage therapist. Not just okay, a really good one. You might have to search a little bit, but from all accounts, they're still masters living in Thailand working that you can study with. Yep. So um, your, uh, your new Thai, um, Thai book, um, yeah. when is that coming out then, or do you have a date yet? So the, the free workbook is on the website, robertgardnerwellness.com. The videos of that sequence are coming out hopefully before Thanksgiving, and then the new workbooks will hopefully come out, I would say, around Christmas time. That would be my guess. Okay. So you just keep knocking them out left and right. So <laughs> We're trying. We're trying. It, it's a struggle to try to keep up with infrastructure and clients and classes and building curriculum, but I'm trying. Now, are you going to start teaching um, classes in the United States more then? Uh, I'm going to Arkansas in November. Um, that information is available through Facebook, the Robert Gardner Wellness Facebook page. I haven't updated that class information on my website yet. But I'm going to Malmville, I think it is, just north of Little Rock. Um, I've had people express interest in other states, but I haven't been able to work anything else out yet. I did have someone from Trinidad contact me in the Caribbean who wanted me to do a training there sometime in the new year, maybe April or May. Oh, that, that would be so nice. <laughs> oh, tell me about it. My yeah. only concern is I'm going to sunburn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Myself too. It's just like once I walk out, it's just. <laughs> I, I am deficient in pigments. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> my worst thing is sunburning my scalp. The, you can't get comfortable when you're sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> and what other kind of things can we expect from you in the future then? Oh, my plan is uh, more YouTube videos, you know, blog posts, increasing. Um, infrastructure for tech capacity. So for instance, the way that you and I are chatting online, I thought about trying to do similar interviews with other Thai massage practitioners on my YouTube channel to try to put out more information. In addition, I've thought about online classes, maybe to start off one-on-one -on -one and then building towards like hanging with eight or nine people to do small classes online to try to be able to give therapists information. So if they live in Mississippi or they live in Arizona in an area where Thai massage isn't available, I want them to be able to access information and to be able to try to add things to their practice cheaply, uh, easily, and affordably. Yeah, that's so nice that you're open to these kind of things because, again, the average um, massage therapist doesn't have a lot of technical knowledge kind of thing, so um, now's the time to start stepping yeah. it up and then getting that information out. And It'll be interesting to see how YouTube and the technology changes the massage therapy profession, but the saddest statistics that I hear are the, the what they call the burnout rate, where do therapists on average, do you know, is it four or five years? Yeah, I mean, so I've seen some three, some five years. So. Yeah, and the thing about that that bothers me is I don't feel like therapists ever are ever able to really develop mastery because the pattern recognition, that thing that I see in the martial arts and in yoga of the old Asian master, it's sort of a cliche. 
If you have a Thai massage practice to add to what you're doing as a Western body worker, I think you get a little bit closer to that where you can keep practicing for 30 years if you want to. And at 25 years practice, you have so much more pattern recognition than you do at five. You've been working on people, developing pattern recognition to be able to help people more quickly, more quickly and more effectively. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I think the two major things that people get out of the field are not making enough money or injuries. Um, but it seems yeah, like more it's, it's for money wise. Two things. Yeah. Every time I talk to therapists, I tell them I can talk about Thai massage forever. What what issues are you up against? And they consistently tell me my arms hurt or my hands hurt, and I don't make enough money. And yeah. I go, here's the workbook. It's free. Let's get started. <laughs> like, there is a way. I promise you. If you study this and you study it in depth, you're going to save your hands. You're going to be able to do longer sessions that are more luxurious. You're going to be able to help people. And for me, that's where my sense of Buddhism and right livelihood combines with my massage career. Because when I interact with clients, I'm helping them. They don't treat me like a used car salesman. I'm not the dentist. They love to come see me. <laughs> and, and I like to do work that's good and fulfilling that I get paid for. Yep. <laughs> Well, on that note, um, thank you very much for the <laughs> interview today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Yep. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. <laughs>